Hi, this is Justice. In this video, we're going to be talking about watercolors in Rebel 5. Rebel 5 has taken watercolors to a new level, and there's some really cool interactions that watercolors do now in Rebel 5 versus Rebel 4. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things with watercolor, and we'll have some additional demos of the different brushes at the end of this video. All right, so stay tuned, and let's go ahead and get started. In Rebel 5, watercolors are now affected by specific canvas textures. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. Now, right now, I'm using WK01 washi paper, and I have texture scale set at 100. We're going to put a little bit of watercolor on the screen. We're going to start with yellow, red, and some cobalt blue. And we're going to turn on tilt, and we're going to push it over to the side. Now, as you see the watercolor pushing across the screen, you can see the texture of the washi paper. So let's go ahead and zoom in. You can see up here how it's going out in little feathery spikes. Same thing over here. Let's add a little water. You can see as it diffuses out, it diffuses into the specific texture of this paper. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little screen grab. And we're going to paste this. Thank you. And the reason we're pasting this here on a separate layer is when we change the canvas, we don't want this to affect it. So let's go ahead and we're going to hide this. All right, we can see that there, and let's move it up. Okay, let's go back to our main layer, and let's choose a different canvas. Let's choose this mulberry paper. This has a lot of texture. You can see just how much. Okay, now, now let's do that same thing with the mulberry paper. red, and blue. And we're going to see how here the texture of the mulberry paper is stopping, redirecting, and we can see this actually even more if we open up here. Let's bring texture influence way up high. Right here you can see it's blocked the color. There's a very different feeling when you're jumping from the washi paper to this mulberry paper. You can see how the emotions of a piece would be different, how the interaction between the watercolors and the textures of the paper are very, very different in this version. This is a fantastic addition inside of Rebel 5. So watercolors have blending modes that we're familiar with from Rebel 4. We're going to go through those quickly here. Transparent. Okay, let's zoom in here so we can see this a little bit better. We're going to go right over the top with this yellow. You can see that this is doing more of a kind of a multiplying effect. This is very common with actual watercolors. This is kind of what we expect. Okay, let's go over here. We're going to look at the opaque blending mode here. We're going to go over the top. You can see the color is going to retain its actual color. And with semi-transparent, it's going to be a blend of the two. So with opacity turned lower, it's going to have more of this effect over here. And with opacity turned higher, it's going to have more of the uh, opaque blending mode look. Okay, so now let's look over here at pigments. As soon as we turn pigments on, what you're going to notice, so you notice right over here, our blending modes are grayed out. So what pigments does is it does its own blending modes. It does a couple of other things in the back end. And so we're not going to use these. We're going to use this hybrid version. It uses a lot more information. Use color pigments. All right, so let's use blending here. And we're going to push these around a little bit. And let's just take some of this over here and and blend it so we can see it. The pigments color mixing inside of Rebel 5 Pro is beautiful. Absolutely 
beautiful. It's so accurate to real life with the addition of the textures and the canvas. You can do some amazing things with Rebel 5 watercolors, adding a level of interaction that's never been possible before. This is so exciting. All right, let's change the canvas texture. I actually like this EX13 crumpled quite a bit. Let's do something similar right over here. Okay, so let's put a little yellow, red, a little blue. We're going to push these around. Let's put a little bit of blue over here. And let's add a little water. Again, this is a different texture for this paper, for this canvas. All right, let's look at the granulation settings. This is new in Rebel 5. And when watercolor dries, there's a texture that forms on the top of the dry watercolor. This is not present in Rebel 4, it is in Rebel 5. And this adds a lot more nuance and realism to your watercolor paintings. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to actually move down here on the canvas. Let's just put a little bit of red. And we're going to add some All right, we'll watch this dry here. As this dries, we're going to see a little bit of granulation on the top of this. Now these settings are set at 1, so it's very very sparse. Let's do it again right here. Let's bring these up to 5. You can see all of that extra texture. You can adjust strength and density individually. Let's bring this up to 10. This is darker, it's fuller. Now let's do one more over here. We're going to put density at 2 and strength at 10. Let's do one more here. We'll do strength at 2, density at 10. So the Rebel 5 granulation property gives you the ability to do all these different styles and looks. And these, there are infinite possibilities using visualization settings as well to make the watercolor look exactly like you want. Right, let's take a quick look at some of the brushes inside of watercolors in Rebel 5. Liner. Liner 2. Round. Round 2. Round 3. Flat. And I like that you can have each of these set to respond differently to tilt. Bristle, mop, wash flat, wash round, fan. Let's go ahead and make this smaller though. We have our gouache brushes. And keep in mind, all of these are going to look different based off the canvas and the settings that you have set up inside of visual settings for watercolor. Filberts. Rebel 3 Originals and Splatter Brushes as well. Just do a quick look here. These brushes are so beautiful to me. I 
of seeing the subtle granulation, the edge darkening, the darker sections over here where Tilt has pushed a little bit more paint and has made this a little darker and this side a little lighter. So much nuance. Let's take a quick look at pigment mixing versus natural color mixing from Ravel 4. Pigment mixing in Ravel 5 Pro will have demonstrated in layer 1. In layer 2, we'll have the right here natural colors option turned on. We're going to look at how those look. All right, so let's take a gouache brush and we're going to paint straight down this pyro red. We're going to go to the right and this yellow go right over the top. You can see these greens right here. You can see where the three colors have mixed together. We're going to let that continue to diffuse. And we're going to switch to pigments. Let's choose that cobalt blue again. And this pyro red. And let's grab this cadmium yellow. This is unlike any other program I've ever used before. And part of the reason why I'm so excited to be working with Rebel to do these tutorials. Look at the differences here. All right, natural colors. Look at this. How beautiful and satisfying is that? Look at how much the subtle granulation, the edge darkening up here, these colors transitioning through what would happen naturally with pigments in real life with real watercolors. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and so satisfying to me. All right, now we have a wet layer, and I turn the water all the way up, and I have paused diffusion. In Rebel 5, there is now a... Let's, let's turn on pigments. There is now a diffusion speed slider. All right, so let's go ahead and unpause that. You can see super fast. This is limited only by your system resources. So if your computer is really fast, this will go really fast. Now, if I want to interact with Diffusion as it's going, I can turn this on, use the blow tool, the dry tool, the water tool, and have a little bit more time to interact at my speed and my pace. And this is a great addition. And then if I'm done interacting and I just want it to get done, I can turn that slider all the way up. All right, you guys, that's it for this video on watercolors. There is a whole lot more to learn on how to interact and how to play with watercolors inside of Rebel 5. So stay tuned. There'll be more on this channel on this topic and a deeper dive available for you. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.